Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, okay. <laughs> I am a roboticist. I love to build and create things. Today, I'm here to talk about my journey with robotics and my passion for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, otherwise known as STEM. But before I get to that, I would like to give you some educational context. During a 2015 international assessment, Singapore came as a global leader in science and mathematics. By contrast, the United States came in at a dismal 25th in science. We ranked even lower in math, 35th globally. On a state level, Oregon is only average in terms of science education as compared to other states. So, what should we do about it? Really, what should we do about this? This is a big issue. The logical question is, how do we boost our rankings and score higher on these tests? And to find the answer, I propose that we look away from our education system. Yes, there are some important reforms we must make in our schools in order to raise our scores, but the most important learning opportunity happens outside of schools. For me, my mention to STEM parallels one of the most celebrated stories of our time, The Wizard of Oz. I remember reading the story with my parents at a young age in the sense of awe and excitement I felt as I followed Dorothy through her adventures. And like Dorothy, I was, a begin, I was about to begin my journey on my own yellow brick road. But I also remember the disappointment I felt when I found out that magic isn't real and that no matter how many pairs of red shoes I tried on, I couldn't magically teleport anywhere. But I realized there is more to this story than fictional magic. This story teaches us that every one of us has a different roadmap, a unique adventure as we try to reach our own Oz, whatever and wherever it may be. Just as Dorothy has her companion Toto, it is our curiosity that guides us. From a young age, I was introduced to STEM activities. I must have only been two or three years old when I began creating and building with my hands. That's really how I knew. In fact, one of my first memories is assembling a puzzle with my parents. I remember defiantly trying to piece together a puzzle from one of the pieces in the middle instead of the borders, partly because I could and partly because I was, trying, I was curious about trying it a different way. This hands-on approach during my formative years was essential to developing my STEM passions and, de and developing my sense of logic as well as providing me with one of my most loyal companions, Curiosity, which is my Toto. There has been some incredible research in the field of tactile learning and learning by doing, and I will get back to that a little bit later. So, along with puzzles, we also had Legos at home. Strangely, I was never really the one for Legos. Maybe it had to do with the fact they were deadly when stepped on. <laughs> really, how many of you have stepped on one? <laughs> Legos are quite, but in all seriousness, Legos are quite literally the building blocks of learning. They help kids and adults alike explore their creativity and strengthen their geometric thinking and problem-solving skills, all crucial to STEM education. In addition to puzzles and Legos, science fairs were also an important stop on the yellow brick road. Science fairs encourage learning by doing, whether it be for your own project or for your peers. I never won anything in a science competition. It usually ended up with my mom asking, Annie, why is there a three-foot block of styrofoam in your room? <laughs> it, it doesn't turn out well. <laughs> to participate in a science fair, I, like Dorothy, needed my trusty sidekick Toto, along with courage, hearts, and brains. Courage to compete and to put myself out there. The heart to accept winning, or more importantly, losing. In the brains, to show up and put together a project. The exploding volcano made out of baking soda and vinegar 
was, of course, the classic. But rarely was it the only thing the kids remember when they go to a science fair. Whether it be about the effects of dry ice or how acids work, science fairs feel the innate curiosity embedded in each child and inspire them to dive deeper into STEM. Science fairs teach children to love science, and more importantly, why they should love science, which is to understand the world around us. Another important stop on Mayo Brick Road also happens to be the most daunting subject in school, mathematics. Math is definitely the wicked witch of the story. <laughs> There's a big misconception when it comes to math, that you have to be good at math, or even great at math, to like any other parts of STEM, like robotics. That's not true at all. In fact, you don't even have to be good at math to be great at robotics. At the core of it, it's about learning and building with your hands, not about how you can remember the quadratic formula. Negative v plus or minus squared root of v squared. <laughs> okay. Coding, on the other hand, though, is now more crucial than ever to a STEM education. There are even gamified apps for your iPhones that capture kids' interests and lay the groundwork for coding. Tasks we take for granted, like unlocking your cell phone or simply typing on a keyboard, are all thanks to the power of coding. Having the ability to code gives me power to defeat the witch. What all of these experiences in STEM have led up to is my passion for building robots. With an engineer for a dad, it should really be no surprise that I was drawn to this world. Three years ago, when I was a freshman in high school, I joined the local robotics team, the Lake Monsters at Lake Oswego. Um, on the team, I learned so many things. How, how to CAD, how to use machining tools, how to program for a CNC operation, how to, mail out parts, how to mail out parts by hand, how to problem solve, and so much more. And all of this is done at Lakers' lab. Robotics is a field where I apply techniques and learnings from science, from math, from physics, and apply them in a hands-on way. In academia, we call this tactile learning, an approach that for so many of us appeals a lot more than standardized testing or sitting down for a 90-minute lecture. In fact, research has shown that 61% of students prefer multi multiple styles of learning, but if they have to choose just one, tactile learning comes out on top. It has also been found that because the right side of the brain is still developing for kids ages between four and seven, they learn most easily through visual and tactile types of learning. Tactile learning is linked to increased comprehension, supports creative problem solving, and replaces passive learning. One of my favorite quotes on the subject comes from Ben Marda at Harvard. Busy hands means busy brains. I have been on this road for 17 years now, and I still don't know where my Oz is. I'll definitely be going to college to study biomedical engineering or chemical engineering or even mechanical engineering. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll go off and start, off, start my own company like my dad. <laughs> I'll know in time. The only thing I'm 100% sure of is, with curiosity, smarts, courage, and heart by my side, I'm excited for the rest of my adventure. We will all encounter wicked witches on our respective journeys. Evil monkeys will no doubt be hidden along the road. Now, TEDx Portland has become a transformative experience for the city. And one of the reasons why is that people are bringing their kids. For many of us, this is the most inspirational day of the year. In kids under 20, and there are about 300 of you here, I'm talking directly to you. And for all the parents, teachers, or even grandparents out there, I want to remind you that Oz can only be reached 
if classroom learning is supplemented with engagement by you. With multimodal learning opportunities. And my ask of you is, please play the roles of the other characters in this story and keep your Dorothy on their yellow brick road. Please teach your children the courage to dive into new activities and to face new obstacles. Give them the heart to pursue their passions and the smarts and knowledge to engage with STEM. The first step can be as simple as buying Legos and Duplo or performing the classic volcano experiment in your kitchen. Did you know that right here in our backyard, there was a book created called Creatures in Code? It teaches kids the basis of coding with cute images and, and colorful monsters. Uh, read the book with your child. Or on the next rainy day, take them to OMSI. Guide them through the hands-on sections. Explain the why behind each and every crazy science experiment. Enroll them in STEM camp. There are a couple wonderful camps in town, like the Mad Science Camp or the Girls Engineering Camp at Pacific University. Light the spark and fan the flame of curiosity within your child. Help them find their inner toto. And kids, if you're like me, young and passionate, don't be afraid to chase your curiosity. Let Toto be your spirit animal. You may not be interested in STEM, and that's okay. Whether it's art or history or something, keep going. Now, there are two things I would like for you to take away from this talk. One, that STEM is for everyone, no matter of your mathematical skills. And two, every child, no matter the type of education they're interested in, needs supportive parents, teachers, and mentors behind them. They're just like the Tin Man, the Lion, and the Scarecrow, to guide them onto the right path and to help them find their own magical brick road. Thank you.